hello beautiful people welcome back to the channel well uh i start this video with uh, sad news kind of sad because uh I, we were supposed to have this video out uh yesterday and yesterday was monday and it was a very long video but for for whatever reason my recording software just corrupted the video and i had to start everything all over again and uh, honestly I couldn't do that and I was tired so I decided to come and continue today okay let's go straight to the video uh, but even before that if you didn't go and join the family on our Facebook group make sure you go there type everything flutter be part of the family I'll leave the link for this group in the description any doubts regarding this video regarding flutter regarding anything if you want to post you feel free go and join the family right uh coming back to it if you take a look at our dashboard is completely different from what we used to have and uh, i did change the ui of unfortunately we don't have that uh recorded because of the issues i had but this this is just ui change uh nothing you guys cannot do and i'll leave the code for this in the description so, so you guys can come and check right why did i decide to change the dashboard ui because i want this to be eventually a production app maybe for you guys something you can use so it has to be straight to the point it has to be something good right uh we had couple features here like our navigation bar is at uh, on the side and all but this is not working yet uh so we just have them like this uh, the only thing that's working here is our products page and this is what I want to show you guys when you hit products you will see that our products page or our ad products page is completely different from what we used to have the first thing change I did is uh, now we don't upload three pictures because that used to take a lot of time to upload the picture and it would consume our storage very 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 shortly right so now we only uploading one picture we have the option to uh, select colors from the color uh, for the available color options and I gave this one you can give the colors you want right because if you remember on our user side we had a section where the user has to pick the color he wants then we have another section where we select available sizes and have these switches we to set if the product is on sale or not right and then the rest is basically the same. I went ahead and created some fake categories. Now we only have men and kids, and for the brand we only have Nike, right? So uh, this video is going to be the first part oh, to the videos where we load the data from the database. Now let's add um, one more product, and uh, this can be this one. And let's say we still have white we only have white and black as the available colors we have large extra large and xxl and this is a featured product for example name uh, good blazer it's for men we have 75 available and the price is three hundred dot ninety nine. Add product. We will change the way the loading icon looks like, but that's not the main thing to do now. So the product was added to the database. So this is all the changes that were done on the admin side, right? Now here on our editor we have the user side of the app and don't mind this name chat app this is just a mistake I did way way before uh, well I was, when I was naming the project right so don't worry this is our e-commerce app uh, so uh, what's happening here let me put this on full screen for us to be able to first of all let's go to our database and I'll try to show you guys how our data is structured. If you see, we have brands, categories, users, but now we're interested in products, right? So uh, for the products, 
this is what we have we have brand nike category kids we have uh, a list which contains the set of colors available colors for that particular product we have if it the prop if the prod product is a featured product we have the name of the product we have the price the quantity if the product is on sale or not and for this particular one it's not and we have the available sizes for that particular product so this is how the data is structured on our database now on the app we have to create a class model that's going to fetch this data and create an object with these properties brand category colors and everything right if we go back here I created you'll have to go to la, uh, to, to, to our lib folder and create a folder called models and for this particular model I gave the name of this file product.dart because this model is going to model our products according to the way we have them on our database the very first thing you're going to do here is uh, we are going to import um, Cloudflare store because we are going to use this eventually right so this is the first thing we're going to do uh, after this we are going to create a class called product this is what we're going to be using to model our products from the database so you'll create this class and call the class product right now uh, here we are going to create a set of constants and if you pay attention these constants are the names of these fields here brand category and all so these constants are the name of these uh, fields here right and be sure that here we don't care about the data type that the field stores string everything all of all of those are string constants because they represent the name of the field right that's why we have constants why do we have this uh, when we want to access a field we can have multiple methods inside of this class that will access the same field so to make sure that we don't uh, mistype the name of the field uh, in couple methods and that can generate a problem we'll create constants with the name of that particular field and we're going to use uh, to reference the those cost constants to have access to the fields right and then uh, we have to create a set of private variables uh, now here we 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 are creating variables that are going to store the type of data present in each of these fields right for example for brand this is going to be a string because on our field brand that that's a string if you see something like colors for example colors is going to be a list of strings and if you see here this is why we have white black this is a list of strings so we are going to create our private variables brand category id all of the prod the products properties price the quantity and all of that right quantity which is an integer the price is a double and boolean to set to check yeah. if the product is featured or not uh sorry for the noise okay now these variables are private meaning we cannot access this from the app or from other classes so we have to create a way for us to access these private variables and that's when we use getters using getters we can get the values of the variables but we cannot change them right and that's a safe approach to follow now here we have a collection of getters and if you see by convention the getter has the same name has the it will contain will have the same name as the variable for the, for the private variable brand the getter is going to be called brand as well now when we want to access the brand of a particular product we are going to use this property of the product object called brand and brand is going to return the value of our private variable brand meaning we cannot change the brand of the product because we cannot access this private variable outside of this product class but we can see is like we are giving a read only uh, access or permission we can only read the properties but we cannot change inside of the app now we are going to create uh, getters for all of the properties of the product for the brand for the category for the ID for the name the picture and all of these properties are going to require getters right now we need a manner to initialize these variables 
with the data that we are going to get from our database. That's why we are going to create something called a named constructor. And basically a named con constructor is a constructor with a specific different name, right? With a specified name, a constructor that's going to be called. We can call this constructor when we are creating a particular object of that class. So uh, we generated a named constructor and the name constructor generated is called from snapshot. Uh, we are going to take one parameter called document snapshot, which is something we are going to get from the database. This is the document snapshot that we're going to be referencing to. And for the document snapshot, we will say the document snapshot dot data featured, which is going to be this field, the featured field. Then we're going to assign the value of that field to this particular variable featured our private variable right so we are going to do this for every single field we are going to retrieve the data from every single field on the database and we are going to assign those values to these private variables here inside of the class and then we are going to get we are going to read those values using the getters right so when we create an object of this class of the class products we are going to read the data from the database we are going to assign that that the values uh, to these private variables and we will be able to read that using the getters inside of the app right uh i know that here was a lot to check in and maybe it was kind of um confusing for you guys but i really hope you guys did understand this because that's the first part and i didn't want to make this very long and super complex i have to make sure that you guys understand what we are doing as we are doing it right so uh after this on our next video we are going to actually start reading the va these values from our app right so uh i hope you guys did enjoy the video and if you did leave a li like and uh, if you didn't feel free to dislike it and leave a comment telling me why you didn't like it and i see you guys on our next video that hopefully is going to come tomorrow right uh see you